We're discussing from Acts chapter 10. In Acts chapter 10, and the uh, main theme and the title was how to be useful, how to be a useful vessel. I mean, how to be a useful vessel. And we have been, I mean, studying about two different characters from the different background. The one was Cornelius and the second person was Peter. And also, uh, uh, both of them, we already discussed about, both of them had many similarities. So we are studying how to be a, how to be a useful vessel in the hands of God. How to be a useful vessel in the hands of God. So God is uh, using every person for his purpose. And God is using I mean, uh, uh, every person uh, for, the, for the glory of the name of the Lord. So whenever we come to the presence of God, just remember that you and me are used by God. And God can use every person as a vessel, as a vessel, as an instrument for the glory of God. And when we study about Cornelius and Peter, both of them had many similarities. Both of them had many similarities that we were reading maybe uh, chapter 10, Acts chapter 10, verses uh, uh, 1 through uh, 5. And also, uh, uh, both of them were used by God as an instrument uh, in the hands of uh, God as an, as an instrument. And also, now we are studying how God used that person. How God used a person. Okay? And how can a person be a useful vessel in the hands of God? Amen? And for that, the first point was both of them were connected with God in prayer. Amen? Both of them, Cornelius and Peter, both of them were connected with God in prayer. Both of them were God-fearing people. God-fearing people. They were devoted to God. They were praying people. They were receiving visions and counsel from God. And they were always staying to, I mean, staying tuned to God to walk in them. And always they were looking for a chance to do something for the name of the Lord. Amen. So this morning let me encourage you with the first point. That when we are connected to God always. If you are staying tuned with God. I mean if we are right with God. And we have that close connection with God through prayer. I mean God can use every person. Man, this morning also, every person can be used by the by the Lord as a vessel, as an instrument in the hands of God if we are connected to God in prayer. Man, the people, those who are connected to God in prayer, and if a person is devoted to God, and, and that person is fearful in the, in the, in the, in the presence of God, that that person can be used by the Lord, I mean, according to I mean, Acts chapter 1 verses, I mean, Acts chapter 10 verses 1 to 5. Now again, the second point I would like to share with you this morning is, I mean the second point is entirely different. The first point was both of them, Cornelius and Peter, they were always connected to God in their life through prayer. And the second thing is both of them obeyed in the instructions of God. Both of them obeyed in the instructions of God. So when God is giving a command, when God is giving a vision, when God is giving a word of God or a counsel of God or a commandment of God and those people were able to obey the command of God. They were able to, I mean, receive that instruction from the Lord and also they were able to obey and do according to the word of God. And we will read maybe Acts chapter 10 verses 7 and 8 first. I mean, Acts chapter 10 verses 7 and 8. If anybody is ready uh, for reading those I mean, verses, you can read that. I mean, Acts chapter 10 verses 7 and 8 and 19 to 21 and 28 to 29. Yeah. When the angel who spoke to him had gone, Cornelius <coughs> called two of his servants and a devout soldier who was one of his attendants. He told them everything that had happened and sent them to Joppa. Verse 9. About noon the following day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city. Uh, this is 19 to 21, no? 19 to 21, yeah. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, mm. the Spirit said to him, Simon, three men are looking for you. So get up and go downstairs. Mm. Do not hesitate to go with them, mm. for I have sent them. Peter went down and said to the men, I'm the one you're looking for. Why have you come? 28 and 29. 28 and 29. He said to them, You're well aware that it is against our law for a Jew to associate with or visit a Gentile. Yeah. 
But God has shown me that I should not call anyone impure or unclean. For when I was sent for, I came without raising any objection. May I ask why you sent for me? Amen. So through these verses we understand these people, Cornelius and Peter, they were always eager to listen to the word of God and also they were always ready to obey the word of God. When you read uh, I mean, verses 7 and 8, it says that when the angel who was speaking to him had left, he summoned two of his servants and devout soldiers for those who were his personal attendees. You know, we have to remember one thing, you know, when uh, uh, Cornelius was receiving that vision and the word of God from God and saying that you have to send I mean, some persons to, to, to Peter to meet him and you have to I mean, bring him here and to, to listen to the word of God. I mean, so he was ready to obey that word of God and he was sending his soldiers to meet Peter and call him from that place. Maybe, maybe I mean, he was in I mean, a Caesarea and from that place to, I mean, uh, he was in Joppa and call him from Joppa and bring him into Caesarea. So we have to think about why, I mean, Cornelius was obeying the word of God because he was praying in the presence of God and we, he was knowing that, I mean, if I am praying in the presence of God and if when God is giving some of the words to me, I mean, I just wanted to obey that word of God. I mean, the praying people will surely obey the word of God. Hallelujah. The praying people, the people those who are connected with God always, they will obey the word of God. There is no objection for that and they are ready to obey the word of God if you are a praying person. So listen here, Cornelius was just obeying the word of God and sending his soldiers to the, to, to the Joppa to meet I mean, Peter and talk to him. And again, when you read uh, verses 19 and 20, verses 19 and 20, it says that, but get up. You know, uh, it is, it is uh, uh, while Peter was uh, reflecting on the vision, the Spirit said to him, Behold, three men are looking for you. Here, the first verse, I mean, seven, uh, verses 7 and 8 speaks about Cornelius. And now, 19 and 20 verses speaks about Peter. When Peter also was praying. Cornelius was praying. Peter also was praying. Cornelius, Cornelius received the vision. And Peter also received the vision. And Cornelius obeyed the word of God. And also, Peter is obeying the word of God. Peter was receiving that I mean, particular I mean, vision and he was just thinking about what to do for that. And it says that, Behold, their men are looking for you, but get up, go downstairs and accompany them without misgiving, for I have sent them myself. Well, then Peter went down to the men and said, Behold, I am the one you are looking for. What is the reason for which you have come? So when God was saying to Peter, You have to receive those people. Now, even before that, he was receiving a vision that, I mean, it, it is very ugly vision. That means, you know, I mean, he was, uh, uh, God was uh, showing something, I mean, a special vision for this man. And it is written in, the, in those portions. Maybe we have no time to read all those portions. But when he was receiving that vision, he himself was thinking, oh, should I need to obey this I mean, vision because this is not a proper thing for me. This is an ugly thing and I should not eat all those things. I should not cut all these, those things and I should not eat all those things. But again, God is giving his word and you have to do that. You have to do that. You have to do that. Amen. At first, Peter was doing that and he was doing, obeying the command of God and he was, I mean, he went down to men and said, Behold, I am the one you are looking for. That means, he said, I am ready for you. I am ready for you because I have the word of God. I have the command of God and I am going to obey the word of God. Again, in verses 28 and 29, it says that, and he said to them, You yourselves know how unlawful it is for man who is due to associate with a foreigner or to visit him. And yet God has shown me that I should not call any man unholy or unclean. Listen very carefully. Peter was saying, you know, I was not supposed to do that. I am not a person to have an associate with to you people because you are Gentiles. 
Okay, the Jewish people totally, you know, normally they don't uh, have any relation with the Gentile people, especially, you know, when uh, 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 Jesus Christ was talking with the Samaritan woman, I mean, Jesus was saying, okay, I mean, and they, in their communication, you know, uh, uh, that uh, Samaritan woman was saying that, okay, hey, don't you know that Lord, I mean, I mean, what, what are you talking about? I mean, you're asking the water from me. I am a Samaritan woman. Okay, then Jesus said, no, 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 there is no difference between the Samaritan woman or, or Jewish people because, I mean, we all are one in God. We all are one in God. There is no difference between. I mean, so the same thing is happening here. Peter was a Jew. And he was just listening to the word of God. He was receiving the vision. And he was thinking, oh, I am a Jew. Why should I go to that place to meet this Cornelius? I am a Jewish person. And I cannot go there. When he was thinking in that way, we read there in verse uh, uh, 20, 20, uh, 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 yeah, yeah, 28, it says that you yourself know how unlawful it is for a man who is a Jew to associate with a person who is a gender person or unclean person or un unholy person. But 29th verse says, this is why I came without even raising any objection when I was sent for. So I ask for what reason you have sent for me. I came without even raising an objection. Listen very carefully. Peter is just standing in front of us this morning and saying that if I obey the word of God, you can also obey the word of God. Hallelujah. But the Lord is speaking to you. You have to receive the vision. You have to receive the word of God. And we are obligated to obey the word of God. I mean, Peter was thinking, no, no, I should not have any association with these Gentile people. But God said, no, 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 no. You should not say that. You should not think about that. You have to obey the word of God. And you have to receive those people. Speak to those people. And Cornelius, a centurion, is waiting for you there. In Caesarea. Cornelius is waiting there. I mean, you have to go there. I mean, this morning let me, I mean, let me encourage you with the spirit of the Lord that when God is speaking to you, I mean, something which is not proper for you, which you think that, okay, it is, it should not be done for, by me because I'm a person in a, in a, in a dignity or I'm a person in a, in a special position. I should not do that. But God says, you have to do that. You have to do that. There is no difference between I mean, the, the, the believers or the pastor or the elders or I mean, any person who is in a position. We all are one in Christ. I mean, I am a person among you and you are the person, you are a believer and you are a member of the church. I mean, so that is what we understand from the life of Peter. And Peter was saying, no, I can't do that. But God was insisting him and God was I mean, compelling that person and he was ready to do that. I mean, think about uh, this person, that uh, who was that person? Uh, when, you, when, you, when you think about uh, I mean, Cornelius, he was a Roman centurion. He was a co Roman centurion. There were many people under him working. There were many people working under him. But still, he is ready to do anything for the name of the Lord. Amen. Can you take the word in your heart and say that, oh Lord, whatever you say, whatever, I mean, which is, I mean, proper, proper to God and whatever is useful for the name of the Lord, I'm ready to do that. I'm ready to do that. Even, even a silly thing. I mean, sometimes we are thinking, no, I cannot do that and I should not do that. No, no, no. You can do all things if it is for the name of the Lord. If it is for the glory of the Lord, you can do that. And I believe that, I mean, our church members are going to be useful vessels in the hands of God in the coming days. Hallelujah. He was a centurion. I mean, there were many people working under him. And you have to know one thing. His heart was tired of pagan religious rituals. There were many rituals, religious rituals. And his heart was very tired about the rituals of the religion, Roman religion. And he was trying to turn to Judaism for salvation. I mean, uh, 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 Corvallis was trying to turn to Judaism for salvation. And he was thinking, okay, if I go to Judaism from this gender background, I may get salvation. And he was trying to the Judaism and I will go to Judaism and I will get a salvation. And also, 
he was a religious person, but not a saved person. Okay, think about Cornelius. He was a religious person. He was a religious person, but he was not a saved person. I mean, then also, he was trying to turn to that, I mean, particular religion to get to salvation. And also, he was a sincere person. He was a generous person. And he was a praying and fasting person. Listen very carefully. He was a different person. And he was having a heart for God. And he was fearing the Lord. And he was devoted to God. He was praying. He was taking fasting. At the same time, he was a religious person. Okay, what is the difference between a religious person and a spiritual person? <clears throat> religious person and a spiritual person. Religious person will be active every time for the rituals of the church. Amen? But the spiritual person will be active always in spiritual things. Listen very careful. This person is a good person. Cornelius was a good person. And he was generous and he was, I mean, uh, sharing his, uh, I mean, property to the other people. And he was doing the charity work. I mean, he was showing the arms for the people and giving the people many things. And he was a good person. He was a prayerful person. And he was a devoted person. Okay, when you think about that person, at the same time, he was religious in some rituals. Okay, but still having a desire to know about Jesus and still having a desire to I mean, get the salvation. That's what we understand. You know, you know what is the problem of the religion? You know, the religious people believe that good character or good works or observing some religious rituals will get them into heaven. This is the point. You know, what is the difference between a religion and a, and a spiritual church? Okay, the religious people Always, they are looking for something to do. Maybe a good work or a good character. Okay, some people used to say that, okay, if I'm a good person, there's no problem, I will go to heaven. Okay, but Bible never tells that. You know, Bible says that if you're a good person, that's good. If, you're, if you have a good character, you know, then I, I've been thinking about these things, you know. When I was reading this portion, uh, uh, I come across uh, many people, those who are saying, okay, I'm a good person, I'm, I don't do any sin, sin or uh, I don't do any bad things, I mean, I'm good to all the people and I'm encouraging the people and I'm sharing uh, my uh, uh, property to the properties to the, the, to, the, to the poor people and I'm sharing the money also for the poor people and I'm doing many things for the charity work. Amen? Can I go to heaven? Because I'm doing the charity work. Because I have a good cha good character. But the Bible says that. I mean, if you are doing a charity work, that's good. If you are a good person, that's good. But to, in order to go to heaven, you have to get salvation. You have to get salvation. You have to receive Jesus Christ as your personal savior. I mean, if you want to go to heaven, and if you want to, I mean, live a spiritual life, I mean, first of all, receive Jesus as your personal Savior, and, uh, I mean, I mean, uh, just, I mean, remove all the sinful nature from your heart, and say to the Lord, Oh Lord, I am coming to your presence, and I need to receive Jesus as my personal Savior, and I need to get salvation. I mean, this is the difference between the religion and the spiritual person. And the spiritual person always will be active in the spiritual things, but the religious people will be active in the rituals of the church. Rituals of the church. Something that we are sometimes, sometimes that we are doing and we are saying that again, okay, I'm doing that and I'm doing this and I'm engaged with these things. Should it mean that I'm a person, a spiritual person? Should it mean that I'm, I'll be going to heaven? No, Bible says that if you are a spiritual person, really a true spiritual person, then you will get into the heaven. Amen. So here we understand this Cornelius was a person who was very active in religious things and the rituals. But again, you read uh, maybe uh, Acts chapter 11 verses 13 and 14. Acts chapter 11 verses 13 and 14. He told us how he had seen an angel appear in his house and say, Send to Joppa for Simon who is called Peter. He will bring you a message through which you and your household will be saved. Oh. Uh, and he reported to us how he had seen the angel standing in his house and saying, Send to Joppa 
and, 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 and how Simon, who is also called Peter, brought here, and he will speak words to you by which you will be saved. You and your household will be saved. Amen. That means he prayed to show him the way of salvation. That should be the prayer of every person, those who are coming to the presence of God. He was praying to the Lord, Lord, I know that I'm a religious person. I know that I'm doing many charity work. And I know that I'm a good person. I have a good character. But one thing I just wanted to know that, I mean, show me, show me the way of salvation. Show me the way of salvation. I just pray this morning to, uh, for every person, those who are sitting here, that I mean, you also pray in the presence of God, my oh Lord, show me the way of salvation. Can you pray for your family members? Can you pray for your neighbors? I mean, those who are not that, I mean, coming to the, I mean, to the, to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, you just pray for those people. You may be having many of your relatives, they are not believers. They are not, not Christians, so they are not having the, attend any, any churches in the, in the, in the, in the days. And yesterday, I was preaching uh, to a, to a I mean, Canada church uh, in Bangalore. So the, yesterday evening, so it was, uh, I mean, I, 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 we were ministering in that church in Bangalore and uh, uh, they called me to preach uh, to those people, those, the, the village people, all the Canadian people. So I was preaching to them, I, was, I mean, one brother was sharing a testimony, you know, uh, one family, those who were not uh, Christians, and that family, I mean, uh, and, and, and the sister's daughter uh, got married and after getting uh, married, you know, uh, uh, they came to know that uh, that that girl is having cancer. Then uh, they were uh, very much I mean, disturbed, and they were I mean, they were not knowing about Jesus anything. And by the way, that sister came to know that Jesus will heal that daughter, and they started to pray. They started to pray, and somebody was I mean, uh, giving the word of God to that person. Then th this man, this uh, I mean, uh, that he, her husband. He, he, he was in Atlanta, he was in America, and uh, this I mean, girl was in uh, a Bangalore. And after marriage, that person came here, and uh, she was taking some medicines for this cancer, and the husband was not knowing that. The husband asked, what happened, why you are taking this medication? Then she said, I have this problem. Then he said, no, I'm going to divorce you because I don't want you because you have this sickness and I don't want you and I'm going to Kerala and so I'm going to Bangalore and I have to get the divorce. Then what happened, you know, through prayer and prayer and prayer, after many days, I mean, that, uh, I mean, a girl went to the doctor and she was, I mean, after the, I mean, after the checking and doctor said, you doesn't have any cancer. No, it's a, it was not cancer, it was tumor. It was tumor. Okay, so you doesn't have any tumor, you are perfectly okay. The, the entire family came to Christ. The entire family came to Christ. I mean, why I was sharing this, you know, yesterday when I was uh, preaching the word of God to those, just those people, and then people, those who are very village people, they don't know anything about Jesus, but those people are listening the word of God very eagerly. They're receiving the word of God. They are receiving the word of God eagerly. And I'm so happy to, I mean, minister, I mean, to the people, those who are, I mean, from village and uh, that, that, that poor, poor families. You know, I was so happy for that. You know, I was just thinking, God is working and God is using one person to do some miracles. Hallelujah. So this morning also, I mean, God can use you and me to do the miracle for other person. I mean, God will use you to bring your, your family members to Christ in the coming days. Hallelujah. You believe that? You believe that? I mean, if your family members are not in Christ, this morning, I mean, just start to pray for them and tell God, oh God, I'm ready to bring them also. I'm ready to bring them also. I need, I mean, every person, every member of my family to be in Christ in the coming days. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I mean, I know that I mean, we are saved. We are the children of God. And we, I am, I am a child of God. And I am happy about that. But how many of you are praying for your family members? Hallelujah. How many of you are praying for the unbelieving 
neighbors, your house. How many of you are praying for the people that are perishing? How many of you are sharing the word of God if you are getting a chance to share something to that person? Most of the time, we are not ready for that. We are not ready for that. We sometimes, you know, we think, okay, I mean, if I share about Jesus to that person, what that person will think? Man, uh, maybe maybe uh, uh, my uh, friendship will be collapsed and uh, I, I, will, I will lose my friend. No, no, it's not like that. I mean, if you're getting a chance, share something about Jesus to that person and God can use you as, an, as a useful person Hallelujah. to bring that person to the church. Thank you, Remy, for bringing Dr. Harvey. And thank you, every person, those who are bringing some of the people into the church because they are blessed by the word of God and they are blessed by the presence of God and they are blessed by the prayer of the people of God in the coming days. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, when this person, Cornelius and Peter, they were sitting in the presence of God, through prayer, they received the vision. They got the vision. I mean, after receiving the vision, they were ready to obey the word of God. When you receive the vision, when you receive the word of God, when you are connected with God always, through prayer, God will speak to you. Yeah. God will speak to you. When God is speaking to you, just remember you are supposed to obey the word of God. Amen. And say, God, yes, O Lord, I'm here. Yes, O Lord, I'm here. I'm here. I mean, I'm listening to the word of God and I'm ready to obey the word of God. You know, uh, once the uh, John Wesley, John Wesley, you may be knowing, he's a British I mean, a missionary. And that person was sharing his, uh, uh, his testimony of transformation. And he was saying, okay, how I was uh, transformed into Christianity. You know, actually, John Wesley, he was a man of God. And he was a Christian. And he was uh, a, a member of a Christian family. And he was a minister. He was a minister. And um, uh, he was a son of a minister. But John Wesley... He was not having the assurance of salvation. He was not having an assurance of salvation. I don't know how many people are sitting here without the assurance of salvation. You may be a member of the church. You may be a, I mean, a believer. You may be something I mean, doing for the name of the Lord. And you prefer that you are a, you are a Christian. But sometimes we don't have the assurance of salvation in us. Especially our children. Our children, pray for them, share with them. I mean, they have to have the assurance of salvation. You know what happened? John Wesley, he was a missionary. He was working for the Lord. And he was a minister. At the same time, he was not having an assurance about salvation. And he was attending in a, in a small gathering. He was attending in a small gathering where the preacher was preaching about salvation. And this man was thinking... Oh, I am a minister of God and I am doing the work of God. I am a missionary and I am, I am preaching the gospel to many people. Then why in this group, this person is speaking about salvation? Then after a few minutes, the spirit of the Lord spoke to John Wesley and he is, I mean, written in his book about the transformation and he says that and that was the day that I was thinking about my assurance of salvation. And he was thinking about his assurance of salvation. He was not knowing anything. I mean, more, more about all these things. Personally, he was not experiencing anything. He had many things to share with the people. Amen? I mean, you know, he was I mean, sharing about, about gospel. He was sharing about Jesus to many people. But he himself was not having the experience of salvation inside him. He was not having the assurance of salvation. This is happening many times in many churches in these days. Hallelujah. Can you pray for your children? I mean, ensure that they are your children. You are a Christian and they are a Christian children. But at the same time, think about them that they must know what is salvation. They must know and they must personally experience Jesus in their life. Amen. We are connected to the VBS. This may be on, on 20, 30, 31st. 
Amen. Let me let me encourage you that send your children for the BBS and let them listen to the word of God. Let them know about Jesus and let them experience the presence of God in their life. Amen. Hallelujah. Here we, we understand Cornelius was experiencing that particular presence of God in his personal life through Peter. We will explain all those things in the coming. I mean, days is impossible. I mean, we are, I'm stopping the message today. I mean, this year. Because, I mean, the, the, the Bible says that, I mean, whenever we come to the presence of God, we are supposed to pray in the presence of God. Receive the word of God. Receive the vision from the Lord. And pray for, I mean, to, to show the way of salvation. Hallelujah. Shall your close your eyes in the presence of God a moment? Hallelujah. Thank you, Master. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. As we were listening from the word of God this morning, that, I mean, Cornelius and Peter, both of them were, I mean, tuned, stay tuned with the Lord. And they were always connected with the Lord. So that when they were praying, they received the vision. And they received the word of God. Secondly, both of them were ready to obey the word of God. Both of them were ready to obey the word of God. Whatever it may be. Cornelius was a Jew. I mean, uh, uh, Peter was a Jewish person, but Cornelius was from a Gentile background. But Peter was saying, no, no, because God told me to accept those people. Because God, I mean, told me to receive those people and talk to them, then I am ready to obey the word of God without any objection without any objection. Amen. This morning also, the Lord's Spirit is speaking to every person, those who are sitting here. Hallelujah. To every person, those who are attending through the Zoom meeting this morning. Amen. Let me encourage you that when you pray in the presence of God, the Lord's Spirit will speak to you. Amen. God will give you some of the visions in your life. Hallelujah. And if you are ready to do that, and if you are ready to obey the word of God, hallelujah. I mean, more than the religious rituals, hallelujah. I know that I mean, we are doing many things for the, as a ritual for the church. But it is not the matter. I mean, whatever we do, that's good. If you are a good person, that's good. If you have a good character, that's good. But how many of you are thinking about how can I become a real child of God, a real spiritual person in my Christian life? Let us all sum it out with the mighty hand of God. Hallelujah. And let us pray together. Hallelujah. I would request that any one person can lead us in prayer now according to the word of God for, for, for a moment. Very shortly. Any one of you. Any one of you. Praise God. Submitting and meditating the word of God and submitting in the presence of God. Any word of you can read Holy Father, we thank thee and praise you, Lord, for the word thank that we you, have Jesus. heard tonight this morning, O oh Lord. Amen. For the Lord, your people prayed and you answered prayers, O oh Lord. And so we thank you, Lord, for hearing the prayer of Cornelius and Peter, O oh Lord. And Father, Lord, those examples to us, O oh Lord. Thank you. So, Father, Lord, you are God who answers prayers. You're the God who delights in answering the prayers of your people. And so we call upon you, O oh Lord, this morning time. Father, Lord, revive us again, O Lord. Give us the assurance of salvation within us, O Lord. Help us that we may not do things ritually, O Lord. That, Father, Lord, that we may have a true relationship with our Savior, with our God. That we may come before the Lord in prayer, O Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And pour out our hearts before you, O Lord. Hallelujah. Father, Lord, help us, O Lord, that we may not just be a church attender, O Lord. Help Hallelujah. us that we may not do things ritually, O Lord. But help us, O Lord, that we may have a true love for you, O Lord. That Praise we may God. call upon the name of the Lord all the days of our life, O Lord. And that have we we may have a true relationship with you, O Lord. That we may have we communicate with you in prayer, O Lord. And you're the God who answers prayers, O Lord. We also pray for our children, O Lord. Father, Lord, they grow up in the church and they think that this is all that is required, that they come on Sunday and sit in the church, O Lord. But Father, help them, O Lord, that they may truly call upon the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. They may truly call upon the name of the Lord and that you may shine your light upon their souls, O Lord, and revive them again, O Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, Lord, we pray for the household salvation, O Lord. You promise household salvation salvation, O Lord. Hallelujah. Father, Lord, the jailer asks, what, what, what must I do to be saved, O Lord? And Father, Lord, your word says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved, O Lord. Hallelujah. Help our children, O Lord, to truly call upon the name of the Lord, that they may truly pour out their heart before God, and they truly, truly have a relationship with their Savior, O Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for this time, O Lord. Father, Lord, we thank you for giving pastor the wisdom and the strength to speak the word of God, O Lord. Hallelujah. Truly regenerate us, O Lord. Revive 
revive us one more time, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, we, we may you. hallelujah call upon the name of the Lord all the days of our life, O oh Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this time. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. The worship team will come forward and